Hello everyone, I'm Pete Campbell here on Eagles Talk, You're here on EaglesHockey.ca with a man who needs no introduction, the head coach and general manager of the Orangeville Crushers, Dale Howarchuk, an NHL Hall of Famer. And Dale, we're speaking after your hockey club defeated the Bowmanville Eagles 2-1 to in a shootout. Uh, that was quite a game. Uh, I think it was a great game. I'm sure if you talk to a lot of people that were here over the two days, that might have been the best one. We saved the best for last, I guess. but. You know what? Both teams played well. Um, both teams uh, deserved, to, could have had their, had their opportunities to win the game. And sometimes it's unfortunate when it goes to a shootout. But uh, I sure like being on the winning side. I'm just going to ask you: Do you like the shootout? Well, I think it's a lot of fun during the regular season. Uh, obviously, in playoffs, it's uh, not an issue. But uh, the coaches and players, it's something where they can have a lot of fun with, and the fans really enjoy it. So why not? What's your impression of the Bowmanville Eagles? Very good hockey club. Uh, they should change their name to the Bowmanville Giants. They're, they're a big hockey club, but uh, uh, they move well. They got some skilled people. They got a lot of size. And uh, I knew coming in, they'd be a hardworking club, and uh, that's what we are. And it, it was a hard fought battle both ways. Both goalies played great. Uh, teams played hard on the boards, and there was good opportunities scored and missed. Nicholas Jagoni, he played well there in the third period. The shots on goal were 13 to three in favor of the Eagles. Yeah, he, he's held us in, and uh, that's what you need from your goaltender. I think, you know, those key saves at key times, and uh, I think uh, we had a couple good chances at the end of the second period. It hit the crossbar, and it kind of I think it kind of deflated us a little bit. It took us a while to get going in the third, but uh, great hockey game. For those who don't know, tell us how you got into running a junior hockey team in Orangeville. Well, um, when I retired from hockey, I guess it's 12 years ago, uh, we bought a horse farm up in the Hockley Valley area, and through... Uh, my kids played in Orangeville minor hockey and then got involved with, uh, there was a junior B team there, there was a group that wanted to buy it, we, we purchased, we moved it to from junior B to, uh, to tier 2 junior A and uh, we've really turned the organization around and uh, Orangeville is obviously a huge lacrosse town but I think it's going to be a hockey town real soon. What's it like to be on this side of the bench as opposed to out in the ice? <laughs> it's tough sometimes, but I really enjoy the kids. You know, they're fun, and um, you know, I'm just trying to. Like a lot of people say, well, you know, you, you must wish you were out there, and I don't. You know, it's like I'm hoping I can teach them to make good decisions out there. So you're not like some star players who get frustrated. Gee, I could do that. How come they can't do that? Yeah, I think some people talk like that, but I don't. I don't look at that like at all. I think even when I played, I always looked at my teammates uh, who I played with because I knew everybody had different attributes and. I needed to find out what their best attributes so that they could, uh, I could exploit them and uh, they could be uh, a beneficial to the team. Any coach from your pro days that you've borrowed some ideas from? I think a little bit from everybody, um, no question. Uh, uh, John Muckler was a very sharp man and very uh, calm and poised for the most part and uh, just kind of blew his gasket uh, when he needed to and at the right time. So. Uh, uh, we all seem to blow our gasket once in a while because that's the, the kid and the uh, competitiveness in us. So it's, uh, um, but you know what? I learned a lot from all. I always tell people, look, you know what? I never had the best coaches any anybody could or money could buy. I always had guys that had little different attributes, and I always tried to take a little bit from each guy and uh, and move on from there. Let's touch on the National Hockey League briefly. You must be somewhat sad to see the way the Phoenix Coyotes have gone when you consider all those years they used to be the Winnipeg Jets. Well, it is. It's a little bit unfortunate the way it's happening right now. Hopefully they'll get that straightened out because, uh, you know, it was a pretty storied franchise, uh, Winnipeg. Um, you know, Going to the WHA days. WHA and then, uh, you know, the big expansion with the WHA. And the people in Manitoba, they really miss the, their Jets. So uh, hopefully they'll get it straightened out and hopefully Winnipeg will get a team one day. I was just going to say, Gary Bettman was quoted as saying, Winnipeg, if they do look at returning to Canada, Winnipeg would be the place. Well, they got a great facility now. Had they built that while the team was there, I'm sure they'd still be there. But uh, hindsight's 2020, and uh, we've got to move forward. So if some of the teams uh, down south get in trouble, maybe they'll look north. Dale, all the best, and thank you for your time here on EaglesHockey.ca. Thanks very much. Pleasure. Dale Howard-Chuck, the head coach and general manager of the Orangeville Cushers, our guest here on Eaglestock. I'm Pete Campbell. You're watching Eaglestock on EaglesHockey.ca.